Listen, my friend, I know that this is not what y'all want to hear, but I'm going to speak the truth. Marriage is not a cure for loneliness, your money problems, sexual addiction, immoral behavior, and flawed character. Marriage often exposes these things. Marriage is a revealer of character. Marriage will expose us for who we are and who we are not. You are what you bring to the marriage. You are what you bring to the relationship. But God wants to take you. He wants to take us. He wants to mold us. He wants to fashion us. He wants to create a better version of who we are so that we can be more equipped and qualified to love and serve in our marriage. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the show. I am Dorian, and this is Not Easily Broken. And today we're going to talk about why God is the only true source that can truly fulfill that deep rooted void that you're feeling in your life. Sex cannot fill it, money cannot fill it, marriage cannot fill it, fame cannot fill it. A matter of fact, most of you guys have all of these things and you're still empty. Why? Because there is an emptiness, there is a void in us that only God can fill. Money, fame, marriage, notoriety, being a, uh, an influencer, or all these things that we desire, all these things that we strive to become. It's fleeting, it's temporary. Most people have this and they're still frustrated in their lives, in their marriage. But God wants you back. God wants to do something special in your life and in your marriage. And he's going to need you to yield to him in order for him to help you to do it, in order for him to help you to become what you need and who you need to become, right? Many people run into sexual relationships or marriage thinking it will fulfill a void in their lives. Then they have a wide awakening their spouse or their mate is incapable of becoming all things to them. I know you're frustrated. I know you are broken and some of you guys are lonely. You know, your spouse should not be the primary source of love and happiness. No, they're not. Only God can. You know, my wife and I, we've been married for 30 years and I used to think that we are the source of love. It is unrealistic to think that we are the main source of love and happiness for each other. It's just not the right way to think. I mean, Hollywood and romance novel and Disney World and reality TV show and social media and all these fancy stuff that you see all over the, the internet, it gives you that impression or give you that idea. Your brain is now wired to think that's what love really is. And it's not. Unfortunately, that is the primary problem in many marriages today. You don't know your reality from your virtual reality. You don't know your reality from your fantasy. Couples get married with the mindset expecting to receive all their needs from a flawed human being. You're going to be disappointed. Couples are asking of their spouse and they're asking of marriage what it was not created by God to give. It was not created to give you all of that. Marriage is not the cure for your loneliness. It's not the cure for your money problems, your sexual addiction, your immoral behavior, your flawed character. Marriage will expose these things. You are what you bring to the marriage. But only God can fulfill us. Only him can satisfy that longing and that desire. Before anyone get married, you were once single. Adam was a single man before Eve came along. He was in the presence of God, happy fulfilling God's plan, purpose, and destiny for his life. Adam did not even know that he was alone. He didn't even know that there was no one, there's no companion like him. He had a relationship with God. He was happy in his purpose and his destiny. It was God who said, it's not good for the man to be alone. My wife and I do not complete each other. No, we don't. To be honest with you, we are two complete human beings in marriage, in God. We complement and add value to each other's lives, but we are not the main source of love. God is our first love. He is the first area that we look to for love, for life, for caring, for loving. 
loving ourselves is next. God first, and then we must learn to love ourselves. The Bible tells us that the scribes and the Pharisees, they came to Jesus and they asked him a question, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the kingdom? Jesus said that you must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And then he said the second is likened unto the first. You must love your neighbor as yourself. How do you love you? Well, if you're married, I think that your your closest neighbor is your spouse. The way you treat your spouse is a reflection of how you love and care for yourself. I'm not trying to be religious here because I'm not a religious person. I'm a kingdom man. I'm a kingdom person. I'm a kingdom citizen. I try to live my life and my marriage based on the biblical principle of God's word. We are all about the kingdom of God. We are kingdom minded. We believe in God and Christ Jesus. You know, we have a relationship with him. Jesus came to help us to restore a kingdom that we lost after the fall. He was not about religion. Jesus said, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. God is all about establishing a heavenly kingdom here on earth. He has given us principles and plans to live our lives so that we can have an amazing life with our spouse. My wife and I did not get this at the first three years in our marriage. It took us that long to understand it, but we understand it now. We we get it. God is the center and the foundation that we build our lives and our marriage on. He is the only source that we can look to. He's the only source that can give us all that we need. And so many people have thrown a good marriage away because they are going through hardship in their marriage and difficult situations. And they think that the marriage is not working because they think that problem should not happen in marriage. And unfortunately, it is going to happen. The, the question is not if it is going to happen to you. It's when it happens, what do you do? We know what it is to have arguments and having issues in our relationship. There was a time in our marriage when my wife and I, we felt like we were not right for each other. I've often looked back now after 30 years of marriage and say to myself, what if we had listened to the lies of the devil? What if we had allowed the thought that he had put into our mind to take root Because a lot of you guys messed up your marriage because of the thoughts that the devil put into your mind. He can put thoughts into your mind. He cannot read your mind, but he can put thoughts into your mind. The Bible tells us that right after supper, the enemy put it in the heart of Judas to betray Christ. The enemy wants to put things into your mind to make you feel like you're not living a good life. You're not living a happy life. You are out of sync with your reality. When the truth be told, you have to create that reality through God's word and what he says about you. That is why in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. I don't know how you can build a marriage by yourself. I don't know how you can expect to be fulfilled in your life and in your marriage without the one who created you and the one who created marriage. It all starts with God and we must continue with him to be complete and fulfilled in all aspects and and in all areas of our lives. And we had to learn that. And we are teaching biblical principles of love and marriage and relationship that can change your life and your marriage forever. So what is the plan of action? What should you do to have a better marriage? It starts with God. It starts with you. It starts with you knowing who you are. It starts with you understanding that your spouse cannot be all things to you. It starts with leaning into the word of God and applying it to your life. It's about your relationship with him first. He started with you and him before anyone else came into the picture. And when you start with God, then you have to work on yourself daily. You have a responsibility to grow. Mahatma Gandhi, he has this famous famous quote. It says that, be the change you want to see in the world. And I have a famous quote for marriage. Be the change you want to see. In your marriage. Don't expect your wife or your husband to change. You change. You get better. Oh, I didn't commit the crime. Well, manage yourself. How do you propose or how do you teach them? How do you talk to them about how you want to be treated in the marriage? Have a purpose that makes you feel complete, independent of your spouse. 
See, when God is at the center of your marriage, communication becomes easier. Dealing with conflicts becomes much easier. Forgiveness is much easier. There is no love without forgiveness and there is no forgiveness without love. You have got to yield that will to God. This is a constant theme in your marriage, love and forgive. Work on yourself. Deal with the problems. Know what's hurt in your marriage and try to rectify that problem by fixing yourselves. I think we often forget that we are sinners saved by grace and we marry a flawed human being. You are not building your marriage. That was already created by God. God is the author of marriage. He is the designer of that product. You're not building your marriage. You're building yourself while you're in marriage. You're not fixing your marriage. You're fixing yourself while you are in marriage. You're not changing your spouse. It's not your job to change them. You only can influence change through your changed behavior. You must be good at growing and changing and becoming. And both of you are responsible for that level of growth. We are so selfish, man. Selfishness is killing marriages today. You have this uber mentality about everything must be ready, waiting for you. That's not reality. Are you changing? Are you growing? Are you becoming? You are in a marriage. Don't forget that. The marriage will never work without you. Your marriage cannot succeed without you and God and your spouse in it. You have got to constantly remember and yield and do the work and constantly keep doing the work, constantly growing, constantly changing, constantly becoming a better version of you. It's a daily walk. It's a daily decision that you have to make. When you wake up in the morning, what is your mindset about your life? What is your mindset and your attitude about growth? What is your mindset and your attitude about about becoming a better version of you? What is your mindset and attitude about serving? I've always maintained that a great marriage is two servers. I mean, two people who decide that we're going to serve each other daily. And so, my friend, that's what I want to share with you. I hope that this uh, um, message or this uh, um, information add value to you. And if you like this message, if this message resonates with you, then do us a favor and give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section. For those of you that are, are listening via the podcast, hear me and hear me well. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. May God continue to bless you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one.